This is our first office, Mountain View, California. We moved here in early 1995. This is 4,000 square feet. It was an incredible leap of faith for us to move out and take the company to our own office. Now, what's really important about this place is that this is the office where the term open source was invented. If you walk into an executive's office and you say, free software, OK, if you're lucky, the response you'll get is something like, hmm, hmm, uh, free software must be cheap, shoddy, worthless. Uh, and if you're not lucky, it has uh, associations with, uh, with the Free Software Foundation's wholesale attack on intellectual property rights, which regardless of what you think about the ethics of that, it's lousy marketing. It's not something that, that uh, businesses want to hear. So Eric Raymond knew that there was a problem. We'd been calling this free software, but people took the term free and associated with free of charge. They thought that you couldn't make money or you couldn't sell, which is exactly the wrong concept. We wanted to get across the idea that the software was open and that the source code was available. Very important pieces. We had this meeting at the VA offices in Mountain View where Eric, myself, uh, and Christine Peterson from the Forsyth Institute joined us as well as several other people. Christine Peterson was there by phone. Um, uh, John Mad Dog Hall was also there by phone. Um, a guy named Todd Anderson, who later worked for SUSE for a while, was there. Sam Ackman, who now runs Penguin Computing, was there. He was, uh, he was an employee of, of a VA at the time. Well, we came up with the concept of open source. We called Linus, in fact, and asked Linus if he liked it. He was interested. He liked it. Eventually, we came up with something that replaced free software. So that was the beginning choose, of open source. How did you choose the words open source? Do you remember? You know, I think Christine Peterson was the person who really came up with the idea. Uh, we wanted, again, the idea that the source code was out there and uh, it was open. There weren't many choices. <clears throat> well, since the first three recipients have spoken for the open source movement, I think I should speak about the free software movement. The open source movement focuses on practical advantages that you can get by having a community of users who can cooperate on interchanging and improving software. I agree completely with the points they make about that. The reason why my views are different, why I am in the free software movement rather than the open source movement, is that I believe there's something more important at stake, that freedom to cooperate with other people, freedom to have a community is important for our quality of life. It's important for having a good society that we can live in. And that that is, in my view, even more important than having powerful and reliable software. But I think some of the people in the free software camp are a little scared by the commercialization. Um, and, you know, of course, a rebel is put off by success. Uh, I think that commercialization is very important. We want to mainstream this software. And I work with Richard Stallman, who's the gray-haired man of free software, uh, on a regular basis. And I don't feel I have any philosophical differences. Uh, me as author of the open source definition, and he is originator of free software uh, as an organized thing, uh, except for one thing. Richard wants all software to be free, and I think that free software and non-free software should coexist. That's the only difference we have. Uh, we decided early on that what we needed a, a, a definition. We needed a kind of meta license to define the term open source. And what we came up with is a document called the Open Source Definition. It's derived from the Debian Free Software Guidelines that were originally written by Bruce Perrins. I had written the original draft of that, uh, discussed it for a month with the Debian developers. Debian is a Linux distribution, and made it their project policy. And Eric and I decided to relabel what we'd written for Debian as the Open Source Definition and to say open source is software that gives you a list of nine rights, which is in the open source definition. The first right is free redistribution. This doesn't mean free as in no price, it means liberty. Um, 
you have to be free to redistribute your software to someone else. And actually, no price is a side effect. You can charge for that redistribution or not. It has to come with source code so that someone can maintain a program. If they go from a PC to a Mac, for example, they can change the software. Derived works have to be possible. If someone has to improve your program, um, they should be able to distribute the result. Uh, there's a provision about integrity of the author source code, which says that the author can sort of maintain their honor, and if you make a change, you might have to change the name of the program or mark out your change very clearly so that your change doesn't reflect on the author. There is no discrimination against people or groups. Uh, the example I usually use is you can't stop an abortion clinic or an anti-abortion activist from using the software. Uh, there's no discrimination against fields of endeavor, and that means the software has to be usable in a business as well as in a school. The license has to be distributable. In other words, um, I have to be able to give that license to someone, and that license then should work if that someone gives it to yet a third person. Uh, the license can't be specific to a product. In other words, if I um, distribute my software on a Red Hat system, the license can't say, you can't distribute this on a SUSE or a Debian system. The license can't contaminate other software. So if I distribute this on a CD with another program, it can't say that other program must be free, otherwise you can't distribute my software. Uh, and then the only other part of the open source definition is a list of licenses that were accepted. And the ones that we started with were the GPL, which was actually the example for a lot of what's in the open source definition, the BSD license, because software for BSD system pre-existed Linux. Uh, I, I think uh, the next moment that I thought was really pivotal was when the database vendors flipped over, which happened about three months sooner than I expected it to. It actually happened in, in late July, early August, that we got they? commitments to do tier one ports from Oracle and, and Sybase and the other key database vendors. And why was that critical? Because we knew that in order for the open source story to be credible, and especially in order for the Linux story to be credible, we'd have to get commitments from independent software vendors to do ports of their applications to these platforms. And I was actually kind of worried. I, I, I felt that we were in a window of vulnerability between the time that uh, we announced the open source campaign and the database vendors flipped over. That was the point at which hostile action by, by Microsoft or other closed source software companies, that was the point at which a serious marketing blitz might actually have sunk us. But once the da big database vendors flipped over, that opened the way for other ISVs. That started a snowball effect going.